Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for attending today's conversation with Black Lives Matter co-founder Patrice Cullors. My name is Dr. Stephanie Hawks. I use she, her pronouns, and I serve as the interim director for the Office of Multicultural Student Engagement. Before we dive into today's program, I would like to leave with our land acknowledgement. Wayne State University rests on Waiwatana, also referred to as Detroit, the ancestral and contemporary homeland of the Three Fires Confederacy. These sovereign lands were granted by the Ojibwe, Adawa, Potawatomi, and Wyandotte nations in 1807 through the Treaty of Detroit. Wayne State University affirms indigenous sovereignty and honors all tribes with a connection to Detroit. With our native neighbors, Wayne State can advance educational equity and promote a better future for the earth and all people. So I'm honored and humbled to serve as moderator for today's conversation. As I think about what brings us into this space, I cannot help but appreciate how we as educators, scholars, and leaders have been called to be and do better. We've been called to look inward at our attitudes, our systems, and ideologies to arrive at questions we might be afraid to ask or even answer. We at Wayne State University are uniquely situated in this moment and time to question how we show up to show, serve our community, a community that is rich in diversity, resilience, and determination to thrive. And conversations like today illustrate just how imperative it is to envision a future that centers the experiences, voices, and needs of those who've been pushed to the margin for far too long. It's my hope that through our dialogue today with Patrice, we can leave with lessons from her work that empower us to serve our communities with compassion, grace, and bravery. I'd like to now turn it over to Dean of the University Library System, Dr. John Cawthorn, who will talk a bit about the library's role in bringing Patrice Colors to Wayne State. Welcome Wayne State community. I'm so glad you can join us today and welcome Patrice Cullors virtually to Wayne State. Now I wanted to give you a little uh, context for this series we call Power of Diverse Voices. In 2021, the library system invited award-winning journalist and race card project founder Michelle Norris to campus. We had a wonderful year-long exhibit at the Ruther, Walter Ruther Library and Archive, and many attended her presentation virtually. Um, as higher education emerges from this time of pandemic, I really believe that our trusted library spaces can reveal more about the complex interdisciplinary challenges we face. Like next year, our program may focus on economic and health disparities or water or energy or other pressing topics our trusted library spaces can facilitate. I believe our trusted space for dialogue will stimulate leaders to seek more knowledge that's actually in the library. And I trust with this new knowledge, we will create a great example of how Wayne State empowers student leaders and inspires change in our world. I wanna thank Marquita Chambly and the faculty of CFPCA and class for their insight and their wisdom and support to invite uh, this year's speaker. I would also like to thank OMSI director, Stephanie Hawks uh, for her uh, moderating this uh, conversation today. Um, finally, I'm so deeply appreciative of Jill Worm and Jim Dower of our library system for planning and coordinating this event. And now it's my honor and privilege to introduce M. Roy Wilson, the 12th president of Wayne State University. And I recognize I lead in this environment uh, because of President Wilson's deep commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion. And now I would like to ask President Wilson to introduce our special guest, Patrice Cullors. President Wilson. Thank you, John. Just about five minutes ago, some uh, background noise uh, entered my office, so hopefully it won't be too disruptive. But I do want to wish everyone a good afternoon and thank you for joining today's program. From civil rights and vo voting to the political and racial injustices of today, protests and activism have always been a staple of campus life. Many of the issues that animate campus activism today resonate with those from the past including criticisms of free speech on campus and greater inclusiveness in admissions and hiring practices. Student unrest and campus activism historically have been responsible in many ways for bringing about justifiable and positive changes in academia itself, fighting for equal education, 
rights and justice for all, regardless of race, color, and creed. The recent surge in activism is a product of inclusion efforts in the empowerment of groups previously excluded or marginalized. In 2020, the recorded killing of George Floyd in police custody marked the dramatic shift in public opinion on racism in our country, driving the majority of Americans to support the Black Lives Matter movement. Broadly speaking, the BLM movement's goals center on educating and, edu and engaging voters, and many BLM activists who are college students echo these goals at the campus level. In Detroit, voting rights activists use the momentum to mobilize under-engaged groups, conduct community outreach and registration drives, and get people to the polls. But black and brown communities